So it says, find the area bounded by blah. Right? So what's the first thing you do? Draw a picture. Draw a picture. Right? So we're going to draw our picture. And I got a nice little square root function. I have this. Everybody see this is your region. Four. All right. Then, after you draw your picture, what is the most important thing you do? You draw a rectangle. Right. Okay. So we're going to draw a little rectangle. And for this particular question, if I said find this region, the the area, find this area, the, the, this region bounded by those graphs, we're going to set our integral up. And you look at the rectangle, and you think top function minus bottom function. So you're, what's your top function? Yeah, Square root of x. What's your bottom function? Yeah. Zero. I'll just leave that off. The width of my rectangle is dx. And then where am I stacking my rectangles? From where to where? From zero to four. Everybody okay with this? All right? So how you find the area. Yeah. You draw a region, you know, like they give you information to draw, you draw your rectangle, you focus on the rectangle, you figure out how tall the rectangle is, then you figure out, well, where, am I, where, is that, where can that rectangle move, and I set it up. All right, that's great, except what I wanted, what we're going to do today is not find the area, it's going to be find the volume if I take this region and I rotate it around, they usually say about the x-axis. I need to write down here. Okay. Okay. Well, well, well that's different. Okay. So first, everybody drawing that picture. So what we're going to do is I'm going to erase this because that's not what I need. And we're going to talk about what kind of shape do you get if you take this region and you spin it. Okay. Well, no, it's not just half a parabola. It's going to be a bowl because it's going to create a 3D object. Okay. Okay. And so here's how you draw it. Right? And I'm not a great draw. I'm not, I'm not an artist, but you know, I always like drawing these things. So when we reflect it, when we rotate this around the x-axis, they usually put a little arrow that way. And then you're going to reflect the graph. And so it's going to do this. Okay. And then as it spins, you don't put a circle. You put like this little bit of an oval. See how it's creating this bowl? Right? And actually, the most, it turns out drawing what I do in black isn't that important. What I do in red is. And so I want you to imagine you've got this rectangle. Can you imagine if you take that rectangle and you spin it around, you see how it makes a, like a circle? Right? So if we spin this around, what it ends up doing Right? Creates that little bit of a creates a little bit of a circle. Right? It's got some thickness and we'll talk about it. You know what? I'm awful at drawing. And since I'm awful at drawing, let's have them do it. So here's our square root function. Now in this program, they've actually, you know. Remember I said some like textbooks, they like drawing the rectangle, they like drawing a really like a full-on rectangle. So here's our full-on rectangle. And what they want, and what we're going to do is we're going to spin that rectangle around. And as I revolve my one rectangle, can you see it spin? All right? And can you see that it's creating this, it's a disk, right? And here's our job. Our job is we have to find the volume of that disk. Whoa. It's not hard. See, the volume of a disk is, I mean, it, the way I want you to think of a disk is it's basically a really short can. How you find the, how you find the volume of a can, I should just do this. Here's my really short can. It's the area of the base times the height. Well, the area of the base is easy. What's the shape of the base? Circle. Circle, right? 
So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Are we okay with that part? And your height is whatever this part is, right? This is your height over here. This is your height. And when, you know, like if this was our rectangle, this width is dx. The width of your rectangle is dx, so that ends up being our height. So it turns out the area of this red rectangle is pi r squared dx. Now let's talk about what the radius is. Your radius, see that rectangle that we drew? That rectangle that I said er, that everything is going to hinge on this rectangle? That rectangle, do you see that rectangle is our radius? And so I need to know how big that rectangle is. And how you figure out how big that rectangle is is you think, well, what's top minus bottom? Well, what was the top function? What was the bottom function? Zero. Zero. Does everybody see that? And so I have pi square root of x, where this is pi, this is your radius squared, and then dx. And what I have written in red represents this disk. Right? It represents the volume of this one disk. Well, the problem is, I don't want just one disk. Right? I want all of them. Right? I want to know what's the disk when the rectangle's here, what's the disk when the rectangle's here, you know. You know, there's all my rectangles. There's all of my disk. And do you see if I add up all of those disks, that's going to give me my whole volume? Now that actually is pretty easy to do, right? See, this is at my representative this disk is generated from this rectangle. So if I can add up all of the rectangles from here to here, right, that's going to add up all the disk. And the way we do that is with our, we're going to take the integral, and we say, where did my rectangles go from? Where does, it, where does it start? Where does it stop? Zero to four. And if I compute this value, that will tell me the volume of this object. Yes? Would you want us to like, simplify that at all or just leave it as? Like, oh, you can simplify it though. Um, so I've got some good news and bad news, right? The bad news is setting this up at initially is really overwhelming. I can actually tell it's overwhelming from the look of your eyes. They're like glassed over. It's like, oh, whoa, I just threw a lot at you, right? The good news is most of the time you're given these problems, they actually say set up but do not solve. Meaning, they want this. They don't want you to compute it, right? But they want this. Yes, they would want you to simplify this. So, like, if this was, let's say this was a question, this was a multiple choice question, this would not be any, this would not be one of the choices. The choice that they would have would be pi times the integral from 0 to 4 x dx. So, with the first answer, you might get like 5 out of 6 points. Well, no, I'm talking a multiple choice question. Oh, okay. This would not be a choice. This would. But do you see what they did? They just squared this, and that was a constant, so they pulled it out front. Yes, what was your question? Um, could you explain the, the radius part with the square root of x? OK. So when you're, this is called a solid of revolution, because they're not really creative. We're spinning stuff around, and it's creating a solid. right? And when we spin something around, it's going to create a circle. right? Are we OK that we spin it around, and it creates? Uh, and actually, the way they find this volume is they think of this as a bunch of little circles. So what we do is that original rectangle, you think of that, that rectangle causes, as we spin that one rectangle, that causes one of the circles. So we write this down, and it's pi r squared. And your job is to figure out what r is. And based on this picture, do you see that r is exactly the red rectangle? So you have to tell me what the height of that rectangle is. And, we've, and that's similar to what we did yesterday, where we do top minus bottom. Okay. Did, did I answer your question? So, that, so it's just like the square root of x minus 0, which is what? Yes, yeah. The radius of this would be square root of x minus 0. Okay. It's not always going to be 0, right? And we're going to see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So did that make sense? 
right? All right? Is everybody okay with this one? Because I got to do another one that's harder. <laughs> right? Got it? All right. So now of uh, let's change the problem a little bit. So you know, I still like this. I still like that square root function, but now it's going to be bounded by the line y equals 2 and x equals 0. What the heck does that look like? Uh, let's see. So I'm going to draw this picture. Okay, we're okay. That's the square root part. Oh, I also need the x equals 4. No, no, I don't need to fix it. If I draw y equals 2, well, that's here. And x equals 0. Everybody see this is the region we're talking about now? Yes. But now what I want to do is I want to rotate this. So we're going to rotate this about uh, the y-axis, which means we're going to go this way. Right. Okay, so I, I need everyone to draw this picture. All right. Don't put the rectangle in yet. All right. Uh, the rectangle, whenever you put your rectangle, it always has to be perpendicular to whatever axis you're rotating about. So in the previous problem, we had a horizontal rectangle, so we were rotating around the horizontal axis, so we had a vertical rectangle. Since we're rotating around a vertical rect axis, we need a horizontal rectangle. All right? So now, let's see what kind of artist we have. I want everyone to try to draw this 3D version, right? And here's how you do it. Okay, what I have in black, do a reflection over. And when you draw the reflection, draw, a, draw it dashed. Right? You don't have to be perfect. Trust me, I'm nowhere close to perfect on this. Okay. Is everyone drawing the reflection? Just leave it black. So we do this. And to be honest, the most important part of this deals with my rectangle. And so I'm going to put my yeah, rectangle here. And to get some idea of what this looks like, we're going to put like a, maybe I can do a solid one. <laughs> what? I got that circle part, but mine was there. Oh, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not the expert on this. And I, I know some of you are way better artists than I am. But basically, can I? Can you see that this basically creates like kind of this funnel shape, yeah. where it's curved in? All right. Now, we drew the whole thing. In practice, I don't want you to draw the whole thing. All I really care about is what what what's the rectangle doing? All right. All right. So, if you have a vertical rectangle, you everything should be in terms of x. When you have a horizontal rectangle, guess what everything has to be in terms of? Y. Right? That was like my last example yesterday, right? So any time, like if you have vertical rectangles because the width of the rectangle is dx, everything's got to be an x. This is a horizontal rectangle, which means the width of it is going to be dy, which means I need a bunch of y's. So if I need a bunch of y's, what version of this equation am I going to use? Are we okay? Every equation has two versions. It's got the y equals, right? And it's got the x equals. If we need y's, we've got to make this in, you know, I've got to change this to x equals y squared. Well, look at your rectangle. What's the right? What's the right function? Y squared. What's the left function? 
Zero. Does everybody see there's your rectangle? Here's our red, here's our rectangle. Let's get this other stuff out of the way. Here's our rectangle, right? And we need to find, that rectangle is our radius. Since our rectangle is our radius, we're gonna do, I need to find the length of it, so right minus left, what's the right function? But since it touches that function, it's gonna be y squared. The left function, since it touches the axis, is gonna be zero. So, when you think of the area of the circle, right, when you think of pi r squared, I'm gonna have pi, your radius is this thing minus this, so that's y squared minus zero, so that's gonna give us y squared squared. And this represents that one disk. No, this is the coordinate for two. Okay. Your bounds are in terms of y, right? Since we're talking about y, where does my where does my rectangle go? So my rectangle is going to go from zero to two. Does that kind of make sense? How do you get to zero to two? Look at your rectangle. So it's the rectangle on the right. Get that, get that original rectangle. Doesn't matter what other junk you've got around. You pay attention to the rectangle in the original area, and you ask, where can that rectangle go? Since it's horizontal, I'm interested in y values. You see the lowest y value it gets is zero. The highest y value it gets is two. So isn't it just like almost the same thing except you're just adding in that area for you, basically? Yes. Now, there's, 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 okay. <laughs> Because you're looking at this going, what's the difference between this and what we did yesterday, right? Yeah. Okay, you got a pi and an r squared. You can see that, you can see like there's an area of a circle. That seems like that's the only thing different. And right now, yes, but I'm not done. All right? All right, so are we okay? Okay. So we rotated around the x-axis, we rotated around the y-axis. So now what happens, you know, I still like, you know, I still like that square root function, so now I've got, what is this is y, I want y equals zero and x is equal to four, so I'm gonna go back to this picture. Okay with that? But now we're going to rotate about the line y equals negative three. Half donut. No. It's a donut. It doesn't have like the full circle. Yeah, it's a donut, but it's like, it like if you flat. It's a really it's flat donut. Yeah. Okay. It's a donut. Well, it's, it's flat everywhere. Actually, it's called a washer. That's the technical name. Okay, it'd be flat on this side, flat on this side, and round here. Yeah, no, there's no round. I mean, there will be. Okay, 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 let's think of what a washer looks like. All right, so, is everybody drawing this picture? All right? And when you draw this picture, I need everyone to draw your rectangle. So we're going to draw, there's our rectangle. Everybody got that? Okay, so now let's practice drawing you know, the reflected image. So we're going you to take... Do you have to draw it on the occasion? Uh, no. It just helps? Yes. Well, in certain aspects of it help. Uh, when I first started teaching, I can remember when I first learned this, I was like, I, lo I was like, I, I loved, I loved drawing this. So I would do way more detail than you ever needed to. And as I've taught it over the years, I've realized what's important to draw. And I'm going to talk about what's important to draw. I probably won't get to that today, but I can get to it tomorrow. Thank you. So how do you draw this? Well, let's see. If this gets reflected, so I'll get a dash line here. I'm going to get a dash line here. 
Everybody see that that's reflected? In general, your life, well, and y'all probably did way better than that. It's not like nowhere close to symmetric. And it's nice if you draw what I did in black, but it turns out what's the most important thing you want to make sure you draw is the reflected rectangle. And anytime it's reflected, you want to do it dashed. And to emphasize that you know, this is the important part, what does this look like when you spin it around? And I like how you said it was donut. Uh, what you end up doing is do like a little ellipse here and ellipse here. Oh yeah, if you're just rotating more likely, yeah. Right. So you can't, if you oh. rotated the entire equation. Yeah, so if, if you want to see the whole picture, here's what the whole picture looks like. You've got this. And then the middle is filled out. Yeah, they cut a hole in the middle. Everybody see it like a bowl with a hole in it? Yeah. Almost like a tunnel. This one's actually. That's what I was talking about, like a donut. Yeah. The edge is round, but yeah. the inside is yeah. flat. Okay. What? Yeah, like a, well, that bowl's not holding a whole lot because there's a big tunnel in it. Like a tube. Yeah, more like a tube. All right. So, everybody see how this looks? Now, before we address this, we need to talk about a geometry problem. And my geometry problem is of, let's see, let's say this is a radius three and this is radius five. And I want to know what's this shaded area? Uh, the area is the big minus area of the little area. Are we okay that the way we find that shaded area is area big circle minus area of little circle? And so this is, would be like pi times 5 squared minus pi times 3 squared. Everybody okay with that? Oh, actually, I deprived you. Let's res Where is that? Okay, there it is. I'm going to reset this. Let's see. Let's revolve one rectangle. Let's create our. If you take your rectangle and you spin it around. And they call this a washer because if you think about what that kind of that's what a washer looks like. Uh, if I show all rectangles and I wash all, and I do all the washers. I don't know. Did that confuse? Did that confuse you more? I was always kind of impressed with how this worked. <laughs> yeah. All right, we okay? Yeah, I think I'm done with this. I don't need that anymore. So now, let's go back to this picture. Because remember how we did our little geometry problem where we said it was area of big circle minus area of little circle, which gives us that shaded area? We need to find that area. We, we, like, technically, we've got to find that volume, which is that area times dx. Okay, And the way we find this area is exactly the way we found it in this area. Here's how I want you to think about it. Can, in this, in my geometry problem, can we think of this as the big radius? Okay. And can we think of this as the small radius? All right. I use big and blue. Big for blue, the alliteration part. All right. So when I look at this, if I, if I look at this picture, can everybody see that this is the big radius? And when I look at this picture, can everybody see that this is the small radius? Do you see the big radius and the small radius? And so what we need to do to find that shaded region, we've got to find the area of the big circle, 
minus the area of the little circle. So let's see, that's going to be pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Right. Are we okay? All right, so what's my big radius? I go look at the blue line. I look at the blue line. I want the big radius. And how you find it is top minus bottom. What's the top function? Square root of x. What's the bottom function? Negative 3. See how the bottom's negative 3? So I drew this whole thing. So this is going to be minus, this will be minus negative 3 squared. There's a pi minus, okay, pi. All right, what's my little radius? Are we okay? It's going to be 0 minus negative 3 because I do top minus bottom. Okay, so if I do top minus bottom, it's going to be 0 minus negative 3 squared, right? Yes, it's just 3 squared, but I want to make sure this is pretty simple. My next example won't be. Is everybody okay with this? Uh, Mr. Albert, yes. shouldn't it be 0 minus minus 3? That's what I have. Oh, it's negative three. The negative is not. I do have negative minus negative three. All right. And so this whole mess, whole mess represents one of these washers. But I want all of the washers. Well, actually, I need to put a dx. So if I want to add up all the washers, I do an integral. And where do you set the integral up? Zero to four. Look at that original rectangle. Remember our original rectangle? Like this rectangle generated this whole washer. And so when you set your limits, you always look at the original rectangle. And you think, well, where does that original rectangle go? Zero to four. You remember to say that original rectangle was from zero to four. And so I'm going to set my integral up from zero to four. And for the most part, whenever you're given these problems, they just say, set up but do not solve. Now, when I give tests, this is actually how I want your answer because I, I, like seeing, I, I like it written this way because I want you to realize, oh, it's, when you look at this, you can see the pi r squared minus pi r squared, right? Can you all see that? Can you, this is pi, this is your radius squared minus pi radius squared. Are you seeing big circle minus little circle? This is how I teach it. This is how I want you to write it, right? But on the AP exam, if this is a multiple choice question, multiple choice question, and it is, they don't write it this way. What they end up doing is they factor the pi out. And they would say this is going to be the square root of x plus 3 squared minus 9. Do you see this is the same thing? But I like you writing it this way because I want you to remember it's big circle minus little circle. What is that sign in the blue and green that you pulled? That's a minus sign because you're subtracting. Yeah. Big circle minus little circle. Okay. Does this make sense? So why is it not minus nine? Why is it plus nine or minus nine? It's, no, that's a minus. That's left over because you're subtracting. I just didn't erase very well. Okay, does this kind of make sense? All right, so now 